Okay. 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 So I was going to try and do an abbreviation of this real life campfire story, but I'm not touching it because it's perfect. And it was graciously given to us by the former warden of Larch Hill, Damien O'Sullivan, uh, which for some reason for me makes this way more terrifying. In 1954, the National Executive Board of CBSI, which I think stands for the Catholic Boy Scouts of Ireland, decided that it was time to employ a warden to look after the national campsite at Larch Hill. Interviews were held and a man named John Taylor was appointed. Now, John was deemed to be the perfect candidate for this because as a young man, he had travelled to the US to join the Marines so he could help to fight against Nazi Germany during World War II. He had served with distinction in many battles battles and had landed on the Normandy beaches during D-Day. He went on to be one of the first troops to liberate the horrific Nazi death camp at Auschwitz. But the horrendous sights that he saw there deeply shocked him and he resolved that when he left the military he would work with young people to try and build a better future world. John arrived in the campsite in March, just before the start of the camping season. The scouts arriving back to the site after the winter months were surprised to see the new arrival. John was an impressive sight with his six foot three tall frame towering over the young scouts. Soon though he became a familiar figure patrolling around the campsite wearing his long heavy grey overcoat and sporting his big bushy beard. He also became a popular figure as he was always willing to enthrall the scouts with stories of his war adventures. He was generally a cheerful chap unless the scouts did something that would annoy him and then he would bellow loudly at the scouts in a military way. Sadly John's tenure as warden was to be tragically short. During his very first winter, he was caught up in a freak snowstorm and he had a heart attack as he endeavoured to dig through the snow to get to Rathfarnham. After a week of heavy snow, a thaw set in and his frozen body was found laying on the side of Claw Road. Everyone was very upset and sad. A funeral was arranged and scouts came from throughout the country to say farewell to John who had gone home. Now the months passed and no new warden had been appointed. It was a voluntary organisation and decisions took time. Some things don't change. In the meantime, a group of volunteers came together and formed a service team to help run the campsite at weekends. They decided the group would be called Mehel, an ancient Gaelic word which describes a group of people who came together to give service to their community. Now, it was on a cold winter's evening the following year that the most unusual incident occurred and left the metal staff on duty frightened and unsettled. It was a weekend early in December. The two metal staff members had arrived on site straight after work. They had travelled out of the city on the 47A bus from Hawkins Street. Travelling on the same bus were their only campers for the weekend, a patrol from Merchant's Quay. They were kind of pleased to see this as they normally had no trouble from the scouts in this group. Famous last words. They arrived on site and showed the patrol to the field that they would be camping in. It was due to be a cold, frosty night. So they advised the patrol leader to be quick in setting up camp and that if there were any problems, to call down to the big house where they would be staying. The staff members withdrew to the old house and once they had lit the fire and the range in the kitchen, they sat back and relaxed. Certain it wouldn't be a busy night. Little did they know. They had just finished their last boundary walk of the campsite and other than noting that it was quite foggy, they retired to bed. No sooner had they climbed into their sleeping bags, they were disturbed by a loud banging on the door. They both jumped out of bed and quickly dressed as the knocking on the door became more and more frantic. When they opened the door, they were greeted by the ashen-faced patrol leader who could barely speak. The staff listened intently to the stuttered words of the patrol leader and soon realised he was telling them there was a man in the field where they were camping with great alacrity the staff ran to the field at first they could see nothing untoward but in a strange grey mist floating over the field suddenly a tall dark shadow emerged from the mist and moved slowly towards them they were aghast and could not believe what they were seeing it looked for all intents and purposes like John Taylor but this couldn't be they thought they had been at his funeral they stood there amazed not believing it could be John that is until they heard him speak as he emerged from the mist. Pick up the stones, he said, and put them back. This was a phrase that both staff members had heard uttered by John Taylor when he was alive. And he was trying to get the scouts to return the stones that they had taken from the wall on the drain road to build fireplaces. The staff stood back initially frightened, but one of them decided to reach down and grab a stone that was underfoot. Then the figure looming ever closer to them disappeared. And that is why all members of the Mehel carry a stone in their pocket every time they do a night walk. Unless, of course, you wish to meet John Taylor. 